In this video, we shall talk about median and mean. We are given one data set and we will get the mean and median of that set. So the mean and the median are measures of the central tendency of a data set. Example 2.2, mean versus median of a data set about family incomes. Teacher Marco collected some information about the monthly family incomes of his students in the class. The class has 11 students. The income is based on the combined incomes of parents. So the incomes here are the monthly incomes of both mom and dad. And this is the data that he got. These are, these numbers are in thousand pesos. 42,000 pesos, 30,000, 45, 340, so on. And this one is 26,000. And this one is 16,000 pesos a month. Okay, so let us look into these numbers. Are these numbers even realistic numbers? Well, this one, 42, 30, 45, 16, 24, 28. So these are like the incomes of couples who are employed in the country. So 16, 24, 28, they, these numbers seem like the incomes of newly hired employees. But these are not big incomes. If you have a kid who is studying in college, it's going to be a struggle to put them in school if this is how much you make combined incomes as mom and dad, you're going to struggle if this is your combined income as heads of the family. Now this one, even with 42, 30, and 45, it's still going to be a struggle. But of course, the larger the income is, the better it is for you. What about 340,000 a month? Yes, we do have people who make this amount of money, combined amount of money. Well, the... The secretaries of our governments, the officials of government that is of cabinet rank, they do make something like 100 to 150,000 pesos a month. The undersecretaries, the assistant to the secretaries of these cabinet positions, those are their incomes between 100 and 150,000 a month. And if you are a if you are an officer of a big government-controlled corporation, let's say, for example, GSIS or SSS, they make something like uh, 300000 a month. So these are realistic numbers. Although if you sit in a class where the parents of your classmates make these combined incomes, it's, it's going to be rare to have a classmate whose parents make this kind of money. Okay, so what shall we do? Compute for the mean of family income, compute for the median, and compare the mean to the median income. How do we get the mean? We get the sum of all the incomes and then we divide it by 11 because the size of our data set here is 11. To get the median, what we do is we, we sort it in ascending order and we find the middle value in the rank list. Now, we shall not do it that way. Instead, we shall use Excel to find the mean and median. So again, Excel has a function for this. To get the mean, all you have to do is write mean and then highlight the numbers that you are working on. It's 56.8 thousand pesos. That's the mean combined monthly incomes of the moms and dads of the students in this class. How about the median? Write median and then highlight the data set. Close. The median is 28,000 pesos. Now, why are the two measures of central tendency so different? The mean is 57,000 pesos a month. The median income is only 28,000 pesos a month. So, if we were to choose which values must we choose to describe the measure of central tendency, which measure shall we choose? Again, the purpose of getting the measure of the central tendency is to help us understand or describe the essential characteristics of a data set. And it just doesn't seem right that this ought to be the measure that we shall choose. Because at 57K, 
only one student would have parents who make a combined income that is greater than 57K. In fact, the rest of the students have parents whose combined incomes are less than 57K. So it doesn't seem that this is the right choice for the measure of central tendency. This one seems like the better choice, the median, 28,000K. Because if you were to look at the numbers here, many of the numbers here cluster around 28,000 pesos. Now, why is that? Why did we get two measures of central tendency that, that are so different? Well, that's because the mean, okay, this is the mean, is swayed by extreme values. They are swayed by extremely small or extremely large values compared to the rest of the data. And we do have an extreme value here. 340K is relatively extremely large compared to the rest of the incomes here. Extreme values are outliers. They lie outside. They lie outside the norm. They lie outside what is normal. In fact, if we were to plot these numbers in our real number line, their places in the real number line would appear something like this. Most of them are clustered around a single point, but there is one, there is one outlier, 340K. So this data set and our solutions and the numbers that we see is suggesting to us some things about mean and the median. The mean is used often in data sets that are normally distributed. How can you tell if a data set is normally distributed? Well, produce a histogram, produce a frequency distribution table or a chart a bar graph describing the frequency distribution table. If the bar graph would array themselves so that they form something like a perfect bell curve, then that data set has a normal distribution. Median is used often in data sets whose distribution is skewed. Again, how can you tell if the distribution is skewed? Well, you produce a histogram. A histogram is like a bar chart describing the frequency distribution of your data. And so if they appear like this, then your data sets are skewed. This one is positively skewed. This one is negatively skewed. And for data sets such as this, the more appropriate measure of central tendency to use is the median. But you know what? There is something else that you can do without using the median. We can still use the mean. What do you do? Well, we remove the outlier. We take away the outlier from our data set. Okay, so we, we, we take it away and then we apply our mean to the data that is left. Let us get the mean of this uh, data set after removing the outlier. And guess what? Our median was 28,000. But when we computed for the trimmed mean, when we removed the outlier from our data set and when we computed for the mean, what, what comes out is what you call a trimmed mean. And the trimmed mean is equal to 28,500 pesos.